Hey everyone, I am Peter from TopThink, and today we are going to learn about 12 psychology tricks to persuade anyone instantly. Now, let's begin. Number one, social proof. One of the most powerful tools to persuade other people is called social proof. Social proof is when you support an argument by saying that everyone else supports it too. For example, Donald Trump often defends himself by saying things like, everyone agrees with me. It doesn't matter what your politics are for you to realize that he's using a psychology trick. And it actually works very well. Why? Because people naturally want to feel like they're in the majority. They want to be part of the in-group. So, if you're able to convince someone that most other people believe something, they are much more likely to agree with you. Number two, anchoring. When making decisions, people make a lot of subconscious mistakes. One of those mistakes is known in the psychology world as anchoring. This means that people have a tendency to rely too much on the first piece of information that they have. This first piece of information is then called the anchor because it shapes the range of thinking going forward. Now that might be a little bit confusing, so let's consider a great example. Say that you're negotiating a deal with a car dealer. You really want the car, but it looks expensive. Thus, when you first speak with a car dealer, you quickly provide a very low asking price. After all, you want to buy the car cheaply. This initially low proposition for the price of the car anchors the negotiation to that value. The dealer probably won't agree to your suggested price, but that doesn't matter because the anchor is already set. From that point on, the negotiation will be based off a very low price, so even if they get you to bump it up, it's still a cheap car. Number three, the deep voice. Persuasion has a lot to do with subconscious evolutionary factors rather than day-to-day -day things that we often expect. Deep voices command other people. They are intense and strong and defining. When someone has a deep voice, he is perceived to be the alpha male, the person who everyone must look up to. As a result, he automatically is given a sense of authority in group situations. Persuasion is really about emotion, and the emotion that someone feels when spoken to in a deep voice is very different from that of a normal voice. It's a powerful mix of respect, admiration, and reverence. Deep voices are the ultimate signal of command, so if you want to persuade someone, learn to develop a deep voice. Number four, manipulating the source. Sometimes the source of a message matters a lot more than the message itself. People will believe anything you say as long as you're on television or featured in a magazine. This can be dangerous, especially when it comes to things like the media or other critical institutions. However, you can also use this to your advantage if you're trying to persuade someone. I call this manipulating the source and it's very powerful. If the inherent logic of your argument isn't doing the trick, try making an argument about the source of the information. So if you want to prove something to be true, look up someone famous or well-regarded who supports your side. And if you want to prove something to be false, do your best to undermine the source of their argument. This will go a long way in the complex and intricate game of persuasion. Number five, appeal to sexuality. This persuasion technique is based off of one very simple biological concept, the motivation in every animal to reproduce. Thus, appealing to sexuality in its purest form simply means using this animal motivation to get exactly what you want. Since this is a natural motivation, ingrained in the brain of every single animal, it's very hard to control, and that is what makes it so effective. Think of the advertisements that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. Consider the last time you turned on a television and watched a commercial. The chances are very high that you saw a beautiful woman promoting a certain brand. Maybe it was a car commercial, or a food commercial, or a vacation commercial. No matter what a business is selling, the appeal to sexuality can be used to great effect, and it can be just as powerful for you. Number six, brand yourself. Branding can be thought of as immediate connections that people make to certain symbols. When you think of Nike, you think of sports and action. When you think of McDonald's, you think of convenience and taste and warmth. 
These are examples of very effective brands, and they are extremely good at doing two simple things, being recognized and sending a clear message. Perhaps my favorite example of branding has to do with colleges. I personally know a guy who goes to Harvard University, one of the best and most famous colleges in the entire world. He told me something very interesting. Being a student at Harvard is not just about getting a great education. Sure, that's a nice plus, but the real benefit is the brand name behind Harvard. When someone sees that on a resume or a job application, you are automatically associated with knowledge, talent, and excellence. That is the true power of going to Harvard, and it's the perfect example of how persuasive branding can be. Number seven, speak in simple language. Textbooks were not meant to persuade people. They were meant to be academic references created with two very simple things in mind, precision and accuracy. But a lot of people seem to think that speaking in a complicated way is going to make them sound smart and persuading. In fact, it does the opposite. Speaking like a textbook is going to make you sound confusing, wordy, and boring. But if you want to be truly persuasive, you should focus on sounding as clear and simple as possible. This reflects a different communication style, namely business. When it comes to business, clarity, speed, and efficiency are everything. Why? Because money is on the line, and no one gets rewarded for sounding smart you get rewarded for being effective. So, if you want to be effective as a speaker, and more generally, a communicator, speaking in simple language should be your go-to strategy. Number eight, use the extremes. When I say to use the extremes, it would be great if we had a formal definition of what that really means, so you know what's going on, and I can be sure that my content is making sense. So, here it is. I define extremes as the top or bottom items in a meaningful list, often described using words such as most, best, or largest. This can also apply in a negative way with words like smallest, worst, and least. Here is a simple example of using the extremes. Let's say that you wanted to convince someone to go running with you. In that case, you could say something like, running is the healthiest thing you can do. Of course. This is just your opinion, but saying that running is the healthiest thing you can do is going to be very convincing. People have a natural tendency to believe in extremes. So, if you want to sound convincing, consider using them. Number nine, appeal to authority. This is one of my favorite psychology tricks for persuading people, and it's very simple. The basic idea is this. Support your argument by saying that a figure with authority also supports it. Authority figures could be anyone, from celebrities to your favorite athlete, or even highly qualified people like famous scientists and engineers. If someone like that supports your argument, it makes it much stronger. For example, companies like Gatorade and Sprite often have notable athletes support their drinks in advertisements. I've seen LeBron James, who happens to be one of my favorite athletes, endorsing Sprite, and I've seen many other people with a similar status in a similar advertisement. Why do companies do this? Because people trust celebrities. They trust authority figures. It's a very persuasive psychology trick, and you can use it too. Number 10, the power of repetition. Repetition works. Let me say that again. Repetition works. According to Lynn Hasher, a notable psychologist at the University of Toronto, repetition makes things seem much more plausible, and the effect is likely more powerful when people are tired or distracted by other information. And what does that sound like? It sounds like the modern world. So how can this be used in real-world conversations to convince someone of something? Great question. You see, every argument has a thesis. This is the main point of your argument. It's your view in the most basic form. If you want to use repetition to your advantage, all you have to do is repeat that thesis a lot. For example, let's say that you really want to have pizza for dinner, but your friends want burgers and you keep on arguing about it. All you have to do is simply repeat the thesis over and over. We should get pizza for dinner. When people hear something again and again, 
they start to believe it. It's just human nature. Number 11, general acceptance. The power of general acceptance is huge, but what exactly does it mean? General acceptance refers to the norms of a certain society at a certain period of time. These are the political and social pressures that shape how we interact with each other and the things we do in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, in the United States, we have this thing called political correctness. It typically favors a more liberal view of social issues and frowns upon anything that could be deemed offensive. Now, the purpose of this video is not to convince you one way or another on this issue, it's simply a demonstration of how powerful general acceptance can be. So, how can you use the power of general acceptance? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Let's say that you're having a disagreement with someone and they're being very frustrating, so you want to win this argument quickly. All you have to do is bend their argument so that it goes against a current social norm. It's very easy and very effective. Number 12, create urgency. Urgency is the idea that something won't last or that something will only be available for a limited period of time. Urgency works because people don't want to miss out on big opportunities. However, most people won't be proactive about pursuing big opportunities unless they're gonna go away. You see, people want stuff but they're not gonna go get it unless they have a deadline. Thus, urgency is created through those deadlines. Why do you think that limited time offers are so effective? Yes, it's true. People like cheaper stuff, especially if it's normally very expensive. But cheap stuff exists, and people still don't always buy it, right? Well, that's only true if it's always gonna be cheap. But if your favorite pair of shoes goes on sale for only a week, a sense of urgency is created. People are drawn to it, and thus they buy a lot more than they normally might. Urgency is easy to create and extremely powerful. Here is a short summary of the previous 12 tricks to help refresh your memory. 1. Use social proof. 2. Anchor negotiations. 3. Speak with a deep voice. 4. Undermine the opposing source. 5. Appeal to sexuality. 6. Brand yourself. 7. Speak in simple language. 8. Use the extremes. 9. Appeal to authority. 10. Repeat yourself often. 11. Utilize public acceptance. And 12. Create a sense of urgency. Thank you for watching TopThink and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.